All right, back with another installment from lizardlandscapes.com. What we've got here is sort of a Mount Everest, Canadian Rockies, Rocky Mountains, um, Grand Tetons type of general classic mountain scape. It even has a hide in the back so your pet lizard or tarantula can feel safe. And what I did with this particular project is I used a completely different set of tools. Tools from the Hotwire Foam Factory. Be sure to check out their website. Got a couple of different tools which allows you to go from this to this to ultimately this. So be sure to check out their website. I found the main benefits of these tools are that you are able to sculpt in sort of an effortless way, totally different from the way I used to do this. As you can see, I've got a little test piece here. And it just allows you to go through foam, as they say on their website, like a hot knife through butter. This is the actual mountain itself. So you can sculpt in a much more organic way. And the other benefit is the fact that uh, with the old method I used, there was an enormous mess when I was done. With this, there's just little tiny bits and, and pieces that you pick off. With the old way, there'd be like a million particles of styrofoam that you'd still be finding six months later. With this, you don't have that. Let's get started. You still want to use one of these dust masks, just in case, just for the safety. And with this, I've got my entire setup moved close to an open window. They do suggest with these tools to have adequate ventilation. What I'm doing here is I've got 22 inches measured out as sort of the base of the mountain. I'm going to cut out some 7 by 9 inch rectangles and some 8 by 6 inch rectangles. So using the hot wire knife, I'm going to go through, uh, cut out these rectangles to sort of build up the, the mountain. So you can see there, there was no mess with cutting that. I'm going to take that original piece and trace around it to create pieces just like it. And what I've done is sort of this ascending uh, style where each piece is getting a little bit smaller. I'm going to put glue in the center of all these pieces. Now obviously what you could do is just uh, get big blocks of styrofoam so you're not gluing together these little tiny pieces. I had all this left over, so I decided to do it this way. But the theory behind this, this being the glue just in the center of these pieces, you need, a, you need just enough to keep them stuck together. But I knew I was not going to take the hot wire and go through the center of these uh, structures. The structure of a mountain, it's, uh, you know, it's going to taper out towards the bottom. Now here, obviously, I've got the... Uh, wire turned off or my fingers would be hurting. I'm going to mold this wire into a sort of organic shape and just basically start sculpting away from all of those rectangles into the shape of a mountain. So what I did is I went online and got quite a few pictures of uh, like Mount Everest or the Rocky Mountains any type of mountain or picture that uh, I thought I would want to uh, sculpt from. And you can see this much more organic shape or result happening from taking the wire through the foam as opposed to the, uh, the process I used to go through. So you can see how it's looking there. On the left side, you can see I haven't done much. Working towards the middle and the, the right. So it's again just looking more at those pictures, trying to see how the contours of a mountain really are formed. 
You can see me on the left hand side. I've got a picture that I'm holding. Drawing from as a reference. So the ease with these tools is you can bend them back and forth. You can create uh, essentially an effortless organic shape as well as you know precise shapes with that uh, straight knife you saw me using in the beginning. So that is how it is looking so far. I'm going to turn this around and map out a section for the hide if you're building this for a pet lizard or a tarantula. They need a hide to uh, de-stress. Obviously I've got the wire off because I'm bending it. I'm going to bend it into a shape, the shape of the uh, hide that I'm trying to carve out of the back of that mountain. So I've got that carved out. And there you have it. You've got the, the basic carved from pieces of polystyrene mountain. And we will get ready to apply the grout. I'm going to use uh, non-sanded grout. This is grout that's already pre-colored in the color of brown. To mix this with water, you can use sanded. Sanded grout's actually stronger than non-sanded grout. But I'm going to mix this. Uh, I get a lot of complaints. People's uh, first layer of grout is too thin. And when it's too thin, it's going to flake off. It's going to start to really uh, crack and look and feel brittle. You just want to mix together a thicker batch. And you want to put at least two layers, preferably three or more. The more layers of grout you put on, the stronger the structure is going to be, the more it's going to last. It's going to hold up to uh, the abuse that maybe uh, you or the critter you're putting it on is going to give it. So I've got the second layer here. Usually I use a, uh, a little bit of color to differentiate between the two layers. Because this project is so small, I knew I'd be able to get it done in one sitting. What I'm doing here is before the last layer of grout dries, I'm going to stipple the surface with a brush in order to uh, try to create a texture. Try to create this texture so that later when I paint it, uh, it'll look as if there's more detail and that I've spent hours and hours applying detail. You can see there the texture. It's not quite dry yet, but you can see the effect of the stippling brush. What I've got is a water bottle. I've got dark gray acrylic paint and water, and it's going to be applied in a consistency that's thinner than usual, so it's going to end up showing some of that brown color underneath. So you've got a little bit of brown a little bit of dark gray, trying to get that base uh, generic mountain color look. Turn that over and paint the other side. So you can see the texture there. You can see the gray not overpowering the, the color of the brown grout. So you've got a blend of gray and brown plus the texture itself trying to give a more uh, realistic look. So here I'm going to apply some snow. I've got uh, pure white acrylic paint. I'm just going to get rid of a little bit of the paint. Usually with the dry brush technique you see me getting rid of most of the paint. With this I want a bit of a thicker application. So with that and with the texture that I applied earlier you can see that the texture is kind of pulling off a little bit of the, of the paint, but it's showing some of that dark gray and brown color underneath, sort of trying to mimic a natural uh, snowfall look. So 
So just applying more of that snow towards the bottom. And really you want to just keep referring to your reference pictures that you got off the internet or another source. And here you can also apply uh, different colors such as green to suggest some some plant life on the mountains. Usually a mountain will have various colors, one of them being green because of uh, certain green growth. And that growth will usually happen towards the bottom middle of the mountain. Adding a little bit more detail of the snow. That's pretty much a finished product there, getting getting ready to apply the sealant. You can see I've got a big piece of cardboard so I don't ruin the rest of that room as I spray this out. This is a non-toxic acrylic sealant. It's called Shields All. There's quite a few other sealants you can use. Um, some people use epoxy resin. With this, I'm going to you know, apply at least four layers. You want to apply at least four layers. This is more of a high humidity sealant. As the last stage, as the last layer of sealant is drying, I'm going to sprinkle colored sand. You usually get it from Sandtastic. If you go to the website, we've got uh, a materials list. The sand counteracts the shininess. It also applies a little bit of texture for a critter. And there you have it, fake rock Mount Everest. Be sure and check out the Hot Wire Foam Factory's website. I definitely give them a great review on their tools. Be sure and check out the last video I did. You can see a video link at the top right hand corner there. And check out the second channel where I've got just general artistic uh, videos. Thanks for watching.